Man, I freaking knew it. Flundery's second best deck in the OCG. Nothing too shocking. Look at this, man. OCG metagame breakdown number four. They were already in the top five best decks. I mean, look at this. One, two, three, four, five. Tied with Drytron. And now, uh, they're actually the second best deck, man. Penguins for the win. Y'all who just say I keep on clickbaiting. Oh, it's not true that Flundery's are tier one. Blah, blah, blah. Stop it with the cap. Y'all are fucking stupid, man. I don't even know what else to say. But before I get into this OCG metagame, game breakdown number five make sure you like and subscribe and now let's jump right into it so 138 top performing decks from 23 tournaments always in japan and mainland china 20 october 23rd to november 3rd phantom knight 38 33 of them were th with both destiny hero and brave and then four are the combo build with just destiny hero uh, sorry uh danger and then after that we only have one who's playing brave and danger so the most popular is playing both destiny hero and brave and then flunderies there's like no weird variation it's all the same thing at Lich, the majority of them are playing pure but some other are playing with weird engines uh, prank kids again the majority are playing with just brave but some of them are also playing with destiny hero but in all cases people are always 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 playing with brave cards in their prank kids decks so don't go thinking that your prank kids deck without brave cards can do as well as the brave version because this build can play through nibiru it can do literally everything it can chain block so ash go skull Meister, and everything they do nothing against prank kids now and sword soul it's always like a back and forth between the pure and the 10 e and the Destiny Hero 10 e and Destiny Hero Sword Soul, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But I guess now Sword Soul Pure is like better, but not by a long shot. So I don't know. I'm not really sold on that yet. And this is barely a Sword Soul deck. I mean, it's, it's actually not a Sword Soul deck. It only plays the level six, if I recall correctly, because the level four monsters, obviously, for obvious reasons, they conflict with Brave, because you can't use the effect of whichever monsters were normal summoned the turn use right of Aramisia. And the Yang Zing, don't go thinking again that you can play this in the TCG because you need Denglong for this to function. And then after that, Attic Nister is actually pretty good. It's the final deck that we can see on the pie chart. And then after that, we have Adam Emancipator, Shadal, Drytron. Kind of disappointing to see this deck up down there. Should have been like up here or something. Uh, Hero, Tribrigate, Lirla, same thing. Kind of disappointed because people keep saying this deck is going to be broken in the TCG. I can see why. It's true that it's pretty good. But it's not like this kind of good, right? It's it's definitely not. And Tribrigate is just a matter of time before it's gonna die. Because with uh, 3 Revolt, uh, 3 of everything, Thing and just one tanky, the deck is kind of unhealthy. Brave Virtual World, Destiny Hero Sky Striker, pretty good deck, but eh, whatever. It, it has inconsistency issues. Destiny Hero Zodiac Tribrigade, Dinosaur, Phoenix Brave, Salaman, Great Zephra, Agent Fairy, Destiny Hero Invoked, Orcus, Dragon Link, Evil Twin, very disappointing. Oh my god, was really expecting much better. And then Recast, Speedroids, Spiral, blah blah blah, whatever, who cares. Alright, Phantom Knight. People are now playing Droll and Logbird in the side deck because it affects literally all the combo decks out there. So Destiny Hero, Brave, Phantom Knight, Dragon Drytron and Flunderies. So one thing that you have to understand with the Flunderies monsters is that you don't get the extra normal summon if you can't apply the first part of the effect. So if you go Rabina and, get, and, get, and it gets Ash, you can't get the extra normal summon, even if you didn't get Veilard. That has nothing to do with it. Issue with that is that if you go normal Rabina, search the Eaglin, and then you go extra normal summon, and then use its effect, your opponent can just change Joel and Logbird to the Eaglin, your Eaglin doesn't search, and because of that you can't extra normal summon. So even if you hard drew the level 7 monster to tribute summon, you can't do anything at all. This is why drawing the field spell and drawing the trap are really, really good. And it gives you an ability to tribute summon on your opponent's turn, so even if you get interrupted on your own turn, it's not the end of the world. But yeah, Jordan Logbird are actually terrifying cards. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, obviously it does have the drawback of well, the drawback, the activation requirement of sending from hand to the graveyard as cost and not discard. So under a D-Shifter, you do not lose to Jordan Logbird. Uh, however, you still lose to Ash, but you don't lose to Valor, you don't lose to DD Crow, uh, you lose to Ghost Bell, but I mean, are you really gonna get Ghost Bell? Same thing with DD Crow, I and mean, you're not gonna get DD Crow if you're playing Flunderies. <laughs> people are not, people are definitely siding out to these garbage hand traps against you. For the uh, Phantom Knight deck, there's nothing interesting for me to cover here. Uh, this guy's playing one Scythe in the main deck and two Nibiru. Apart from that, everything is super standard. Again, we covered, people are always siding to Sanctum. Since they're already playing Scythe for Dagda, they're like, you know what, might as well if I get interrupted to death and I hard draw the Sanctum. Worst case, I summon Lancia off of the Sanctum. Worst case. It's just, it's literally that simple. So, yeah, pretty good deck. And then Flunderies. Now, because of the new quickly spell card, Jornia Preparations, the deck is so much more consistent and better through hand shops that people actually cut Book of Moon completely. And the uh, function of Book of Moon, as they're explaining here, is to actually book yourself when you're getting hit by Valor and Imperm. So, your monster still resolves as a face down. But the issue is that it loses the condition of getting banished when it leaves the field. So, because of that, the Flunderies, uh, they go to the grave. 
which is not really what you're trying to aim because they all have that really neat effect in the banished that allows you to recycle them back to your hand when you normal summon a wing beast monster and that's even better when you get to chain block so unfortunately losing to your own book of moon is kind of a bummer but the journey of preparations is perfect for that because you banish your card and you dodge and you get a consistency card like what it literally just couldn't be any better than that this card was exactly what the deck needed it's just insane how this card was good for the deck i feel like m pen literally just has a bunch of good cards to search and by the way i don't know why he's playing harpy's feather storm it's kind of funny but whatever vanity's emptiness is so free in this deck oh my god your monsters don't even go to the graveyards they go to the, the freaking banished so <laughs> you're never going to turn off this vanity's emptiness oh my god thank the lord we don't have that in the tcg uh no macrocosmos no d fisher in the main deck either only d shifter uh but this like this player is actually side decking the ghost reaper and winter cherries as you can clearly tell with the cards that are available in the uh extra deck so a bunch of cards that actually can technically bxc summoned recital starling and assemble nightingale downward magician zeus literally everything else is just a bunch of targets so phoenix enforcer when your opponent goes araconda send the fusion destiny and battle butler against prank kids a bunch of cards for char brigade so shurig and frigid phoenix which is just a generic card depending on the situation access code when your opponent is probably trying to go for the kill oh meow meow against prank kids is not the best one in the tcg because you're just making your opponent lose one card at this point you might as well just ghost reaper the doodle do i think that's a a little better cherubini is pretty good against phantom knight and needle fiber is just generically good uh, he's actually side decking a second rise out already which is kind of sus uh only main decking one m pen now this is reasonable because reasonable because he's main decking one apex avion but you can't just play two tribute summons it's just not enough however if you're of course playing uh one m pen and one apex i think it's totally respectable i also like the fact that he's main decking the wind bear statue uh you could also main decking uh, be main decking one dd crow but you really don't have to uh no pot of extravagance only prosperity and duality i like that a lot again phantasmic nibiru are weak are, are whack because you special summon on your opponent's turn meaning that you can't use the effect of the flunderese monsters on your opponent's turn for the entire turn not for the rest of the turn so you do have to watch out about that and no maxi in the main deck either which is kind of hilarious but whatever <laughs> okay okay outlitch now uh, this deck is terrifying and i really really freaking like this deck list so much even without the reasoning i would still be playing a deck list that would look very similar to that so one to two copies of the counter trap i think this card is overpowered i didn't i never realized uh, understood why people were only playing zero or one it literally made no sense but yeah just one or two is so good uh, oh my god three extravagance and three prosperity jesus with three golden lord i think three is a little too much though i think it's very debatable whether you want to play two or three but yeah a main deck pe uh, pencrotops interesting i think you can actually search that if you crash the asa but uh, this player is not playing asa anywhere at all oh wow <laughs> the train monsters <laughs> i don't know if this is necessarily necessary but yeah gengari dai gustav max uh, juggernaut liebe and dora the explorer zeus a bunch of cards blah 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 the really important thing though is the three rivalry and two goes in match and apart from that just a bunch of good trap cards not even solemn strike though a little disappointing for me i understand that since they have three skill drain it kind of makes sense uh this guy decided to just be absolutely crazy and not playing king of the sky prison but instead of that this guy is playing shadow imprisoning mirror what that's uh that's kind of whack. Yeah, Shadow Imprisoning Mirror. I can actually make a video on that. And I honestly have no idea what the spell card is. Oh my god. They're not even saying it. Yeah, they're just saying, yeah, Rivalry goes in match. Very good against Red of Arabesia because they get locked with like a an Earth Fairy Brave token monster that just does nothing at all. So yeah, pretty good Floodgates. You could also be playing There Can Only Be One, but I think a lot of decks can actually play around There Can Only Be One now. Well, Flunderies obviously cannot. Uh, they also can't really play through Gozen Match, ironically, because they have Water and Wind. So it actually screws them over. They need like Rabina and ostrich or eaglin and token so it does hurt oh sorry actually all the tribute summons are wind so you are forced to rely on eaglin and token but to be fair it's kind of not that hard to uh, ask because the token can recycle back whatever and then your eaglin just gets you to your tribute summon so even goes in match just doesn't really look too good now prank kids yeah that's a deck that can actually play through there can only be one two token collector in the side deck this card could actually be played in quite a few decks obviously just a good side deck card in general 
And is there anything else that is worth noting? And the main deck, it's always the same thing, super boring. The only Prankids monster that is just a two of is the Roxy's. Sword Soul, all right, this is the spice. So everybody has uh, unanimously agreed upon the fact that Tai'e was probably just a two of. And now people are always playing the Dimension Shifter, I mean, Hand Shop, not really package, in Sword Soul, which means that the Monster Reborn is infinitely worse than it used to be. And I don't really understand the Nibiru because your deck doesn't even have to use cross out for Nibiru. You can literally just summon Baroness or just end on Chi Jiao with the trap and pass turn there. So Nibiru I think is just not really needed. If you play too many hand traps you're just gonna brick like crazy. Desires is good but eh. I mean, it, yeah it's good because you're not playing Fusion Destiny. Sure fair enough. And Prosperity is pretty good but it does clash with the Moye but you're never going to get the search uh the draw sorry when you're under Prosperity. And the Arch Nemesis Protoss is actually a tech that people were not really playing that much before but since a few weeks people are actually playing the card now way more than ever uh, because you can actually search this with this uh, Rota spell and if you control a synchro monster you can actually search anywhere instead of just having to search a sword soul so you can search the arch nemesis protos banish three monsters with different attributes from your graveyard and or field summon this and then call an attribute destroy every monster on the field with that attribute and then well you, you don't get to call you have to just destroy but whatever uh, well I mean yeah you have to call but but well, well, you, you understand, it's not like Reprodocus where you change the attribute and then destroy, but whatever. And then uh, your opponent cannot special summon of that type for the rest of the next turn or something like that. So against uh, Phantom Knight, what you do is that you search the Rota spell and then you search this. You just destroy Dark, which means itself, and then your opponent cannot play it all. They can't do anything. So this card is absolutely game against Phantom Knight. And this is the reason why people are main decking one card. It's just another insta win uh, condition. So Sword Soul has the Arch Nemesis Protoss, whereas Phantom Knight, their one card win condition would be the Artifact Scythe. Uh, Flunderies, I mean, they have a bunch of one card win conditions. Uh, so the Wind Bearer Statue, even the Empen is just a floodgate that a lot of decks just cannot deal with. Uh, this, for example, the Cherubini will not be able to use its effect. Uh, so if you're playing against Phantom Knights, it's pretty much guaranteed that you win the game there. Uh, if your opponent always has to summon monsters in defense, there's no way he's ever going to jump over that Impin. So if you summon an attack, then you can't, uh, you know, you do anything with it because you can't activate the effect of whichever special summon monsters uh, in attack position are on the field, well, on your opponent's field. So it's pretty rough. Uh, Elvlich, on the other hand, I don't think it loses too hard to Flunderies on a game what? The very actually, yeah, it, pro it probably loses very hard, especially post game one when your opponent can play Dark Simorg. And even the Apex Avion is actually devastating. And I know this can top deck a card on the field. Phoenix Wind Blast plus bounce back. So it's actually pretty lethal. But yeah. Uh, Prank it's literally has nothing going for it, like I said. Well, nothing is super, super spicy. It's just a good deck because it does what it used to do well, but very efficiently. And uh, through hand shops, which is important. But Sword Soul, whatever. I mean, I think it just looks disgusting like that. Not in a really good way, though. I just don't really like the fact that... And your own shifter can kind of screw you over sometimes. You can't play the Monster Reborn anymore. Uh, Nibiru, just really... Are you really going to be Nibiruing yourself? Because I see people Nibiruing themselves every single time against me. And then they're already on top deck mode after, like, turn one. Anyways, in conclusion, Phantom Knights, of course, remains the number one deck. But Flutteries and Edlich are pretty up there as well. And they are actually surpassing Prank Kids and Sword Soul, which shocks the majority of the player base out there. But me, honestly, I always knew that Edlich and uh, Flunderies are going to were going to be really, really good very soon. It was just a matter of time. But that's pretty much it for this OCG meta game breakdown number five. Let me know what you guys actually think of this uh, OCG meta in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.